Okay, so then I would um, I would just start with um, saying uh, first hello <laughs> and welcome um, to this um, to this presentation. Before I start the presentation, I would like just shortly to say that uh, during my presentation, which will be around twenty to twenty five minutes, I would like to ask you to close uh, the the audio, but probably also what would be great to close the video so that we have a good transmission. And afterwards, uh, so if you have questions, you can already post a question into the chat. So that's fine already during the presentation. And then Subit will try to answer those that are uh, needed or can be answered immediately or later on when I'm stopping my presentation, you can speak also up and you can post a question or what we can also do, we can go through the question that has been not answered and to answer them later on and so to initialize a little bit a discussion. So that's a little bit uh, the starting and I would now again welcome those who are still connecting and I see they're still connecting people here. Uh, welcome you greatly to my presentation today. The presentation is about a new technical committee of the IEEE Geoscience Remote Sensing Society, which is called REACT. And REACT stands for Remote Sensing, Environment, Analysis, and Climate Technologies. And you see already just on the wording, Remote Sensing, Environment, Climate, anal Analysis, and Technologies, all these keywords already tell you something about what is REACT dealing with. My name is Arina Heinzek. I am uh, from ETH Zurich and uh, have a cooperation with the German Aerospace Center in Germany. Uh, and I'm a co-chair of REACT, uh, one of the co-chairs. Oh my, uh, the other co-chairs are Subi Chakrabarti from Cloud to Street from US. Uh, the, the next one is Andrea Donnellan, NASA JPL from USA, Ryun uh, Natsuzaki from the University of Tokyo in Japan, Carlos Lopez Martinez from uh, University Politecnia de Catalonia from Spain, and we have also some contributors uh, to our team, which is Paolo Gamba from the U University of Pavia in Italy, Anthony Mayen, University of New South Wales in Australia, and Avik Bhattiharia from IIT Bombay uh, from India. So let us go a little bit, what is the relevance uh, of climate change issues uh, in our society? So we are today aware of that climate change has a lot of impact, not only on the society, but mainly uh, also on our global Earth surface and everything that is related to it. We know from the IPCC for the Inter Intergovernmental Panel uh, of Climate Change uh, how strongly uh, how strongly climate is impacting actually our future and our Earth surface. For these uh, 17 sustainable development goals have been developed in order to protect the society, but also the economy uh, of our surfaces. But what is the impact or what is the goal now, let me say, or the, the issue about Earth observation? Earth observation, uh, for us, the definition is observing uh, the Earth space uh, from far away, which can be a satellite, it can be an airborne system, but it can be also a UAV system. So Earth observation can um, help a lot in order to, um, to, um, to justify, not only to justify, but also to support the sustainable development goals that has been established. In order to adapt uh, or adopting the 2013 Agenda for Sustainable Development, uh, there have been global indicator or a global indicator framework has been established, which are around 230 indicators uh, have been identified to measure, monitor, and report the progress on achieving this 17 uh, sustainable development goals. So what or how and what can Earth observation contribute to it? So Earth observation is, is very good in order to monitor long time series, so over a long time, um, and can also track development and advances um, on the Earth surface. It can provide spatially and temporal um, different observations. Spatially means not only on one point, but distributed over a certain area. 
uh, with high resolution and temporally over time. We call this could be over days, but also over months and over years. Um, it can expand monitoring capability at local, very local, smaller areas, but also on national wide areas, regional, but also global level data are available. And this can be done through satellite, airborne, land and marine based uh, data. Uh, what, what it also helps is helps to reduce the cost of monitoring the aspiration that is normally reflected in the goals and the targets that we have. And what it also is very important for is to increase the capacity. This is mainly meant for developing countries or regions to acquire, analyze, utilize these data for uh, policy making purposes, for example. So um, just to see what are the relation now of the 17 sustainable development goals to parameters and we, that we can observe from Earth observation, the group of Earth observations have been has established um, a table of parameters where uh, the Earth um, observation parameters, which are here in the blue boxes, are matching, let me say, to the 17 sustainable development goals. On this table, you see only the first nine very well there, as I'm saying, 17. Uh, I was just making it a little bit wider so that you also see um, in principle the, um, the, the writings on it and not all are fitting really on my table. However, um, for this matching, you see here very, very well that you have, um, for example, I've just read it up, you have the population distribution or you have the cities and infrastructure mapping. You have, for example, elevation and topography information from Earth observation. You have land cover and use maps. You have oceanographic observation, hydrology, water quality observation, and so on. Atmospheric observation, biodiversity and ecosystem, agricultural monitoring, but also hazard disaster environment and impact monitoring. And all these are very strongly contributing to all of the, or mostly of these 17 sustainable development goals. And you see some of them contributing or supporting them stronger than other ones. So everything that is dark blue means we have strong contribution from these categories that has been developed. Here in the smaller area, you see even more precise each of the uh, indicators that has been developed. The 230 indicators are really matched uh, to each of the sustainable development goals, which can really support Earth observation. If you like to more to need to read more about it or to know more about it, you just go to this website that is indicated here. So that's a framework or um, an installation from the group of Earth observation. Um, what we have also, yes, it's just to see that is much more of them <laughs> hidden behind. So what we have too is we have certain space agency, which are the main uh, which are the main contributors to deliver data and information products, higher level information products over a, a wide area, which is not only focused on national, but also can, can provide information global wide. For example, the uh, European Space Agency had the Climate Office Initiative where they are identifying for each of the sustainable development goals, as you see it here on this part, um, they have a program or an associated program to it, where they have different projects supporting um, knowledge base, but also data sharing in these domains. If you like also to know more about these, just uh, go to the website of, of ESA in order to, uh, to know where you can for example, also connect to, depending on the sustainable goal you're interested into. For JAXA, we have, they have more focused, uh, focused area. JAXA is the Japanese uh, Aerospace Center. And here they have focused on eight priority areas uh, where these are listed here. They have a fleet of satellites which are supporting uh, these priority areas. And they have also implementing uh, partners which are contributing to it that also the data, um, not only the data sharing, but also the information content that are extracted out of the data can be provided uh, to public um, or even to scientists. If you go to NASA, to the um, NASA website, here we have two 
two parts which are very strongly contributing. So the space agency contributing to sustainable and climate change issues. For example, NASA has a global climate change initiative where we have, for example, a website uh, indicating really what are the, the, the domains of, of interest. For example, earth science in action, mitigation adaptation is a big um, area in sustainability and governmental resources. But also, if you like to look for data itself, which are providing you already some information concerning climate issue and sustainable development goals, they have a specific website going uh, you, where you can go to, and this is a pathfinder. This means you see already on uh, Earth observation, just in terms of science contribution, can contribute already massively on data, but also information content and higher level products um, to provide information, uh, what is happening, what is ongoing, and can provide also information to mitigation and adaptation, uh, which would be then the action item uh, after just uh, looking for information products. How does it look like for industry? I was already mentioned before, it's not only our society uh, and, and the knowledge about how the earth surface looks like in terms of um, natural phenomenon, but also the economy is strongly supporting um, the is strongly supported by the development on how much money has been distributed on it, but also provides very high level technical solutions uh, to problems. For example, anthropogenic climate change. Uh, this is the, the, the whole world where we have tech driven adaptation and mitigation. Very strongly supportive uh, are this area of agriculture, food, and resource environment. Here we have a lot of technology ongoing, which is supporting these domains. But you see also other ones, for example, transportation and logistics, enabling techniques in general, energy and power, but also material and chemistry. Around 58 billion US dollars have been invested or have been invested uh, last year in 2021. Uh, for uh, climate uh, technological solutions um, and have been, yeah, have been invested today already, 22, 25 billion US dollar have been already spent in order to support uh, these developments. As we're already saying, so a major part where, where Earth observation plays here a role is in the agriculture and food, also in the resource and environmental a domain where around 22% of this investment uh, was already um, uh, or is, is a, a big part of the total amount of technology that are uh, constructed to monitor and mitigate the impact of climate change, which means really remote sensing or Earth observation, as I'm calling it, is, a, is, is one of the major solutions or provides a major, major solution Maybe the only solution, as you written down, probably, probably a little bit provocative, to monitor sustainable indices at, at, at different scales. How does it look like uh, for the geoscience and remote sensing society? Also here we see on, on one of our major conferences, which is the International Geoscience and uh, Remote Sensing Symposium, that we have, we have a lot of different contribution in our abstract submission and paper submission that we have to the conference. So we have a big part which is dealing with analysis, we have a big part which is dealing with sensors, but we have also a one important part which is around 34 to 39 percent uh, of the papers that, that are received that are dealing with climate, um, with climate environmental issue, uh, and also uh, pro, um, in principle also developing products for for identification, quantification of changes that are ongoing on our land surfaces. And these mainly in different domains like cryosphere, land, atmosphere, and also ocean. So let us come back what REACT is now doing. So REACT is, is trying now to provide a venue or a networking um, facility for our scientists and also engineers in the domain that are working in the domain of environmental, but also environmental impact uh, to exchange ideas and, and share their knowledge. I mean, that's the main idea about REACT. And what we like to do, in, we like to do this also in different domains, not only focus in one specific domain, but everything that is uh, providing a holistic view 
of our Earth's surface, which means we are looking for cryosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere, geosphere, but also everything that is related to the interaction between the human and the environment. So our idea here is to have a bottom-up approach, which means we try to gather scientists which are really working with hands-on on data and trying on, or, or developing algorithm and trying to, to find solution or to develop higher level products in order uh, to find um, or to get uh, more knowledge about what is happening in terms of change on our Earth surface. So therefore, this is a bottom-up approach where scientists uh, are, are coming together and, and, and doing a networking and, and, and exchange. So that's very broad, uh, that's clear, and therefore we thought it would be great to focus, to concentrate on local focus areas, which means we are concrete looking to specific areas in the moment. These are the specific areas which are here now pointed out, but we are open to open up also to any kind of other issues that are most important in specific regions. So the idea is also to look regional specific, what are the problems there and try to find scientists that are working together in this domain in order to exchange the knowledge and to try also then to improve um, um, the, the situation there. So therefore the motivation really here is to gather a community that is working together on a common region. Um, we try then or what the community or the scientists are doing there, they're coming with different backgrounds and they're using a variety of methods and techniques to explore also different application domains. Everything is related here to the sustainable development goals, but also the climate issues that are very particular and on the local area. Uh, what we like to do is not only to look locally, but to use these local issues as a showcase to try to transfer this also uh, globally, to have a global trans transfer to global issues. Um, and for sure, this is a very interdisciplinary and multicultural aspect that we are, uh, how we are working here together. So our first established focal, a local focused area is the Pacific Islands, where we have the lead of Anthony Mayan. He's one of the contributors, and I've mentioned him already in the beginning. Uh, also a second focused area, or our second focus is the agriculture and food security in India. And also here we have the lead of Avik Bhattiharya, uh, from IIT Bombay, Bombay, Mumbai, and we have uh, flood and water security in Africa, and this is led by Super uh, uh, Chakrabarti, as also mentioned already before. Let us go a little bit into it. What are these regions are really doing? Where they are looking for? As, when, as I was saying, we just started now, so it's the beginning, and we are looking now firstly on what are the needs, what kind of parameters. Uh, environmental parameter are important to be captured. So starting with the Pacific Islands, uh, here the needs has been uh, um, papered down, let me say in the document, uh, by the Secretary of the Pacific Community, SPC, and they have identified uh, tier one priority information that are needed um, for, for these and uh, that are needed and required by, our, by all Iceland states and territories in relation to land cover and disaster preparedness. And some of these parameters are in different thematic domains. You see in agriculture, for example, is vegetation index and crop detection in climate change. Is it uh, sh sure, uh, for sure because due to the uh, sea level rising is the coastal change detection uh, for conservation is forest cover change detection and for the uh, disaster management is the observation of cyclones uh, is, a, is, is a mapping of inundation, but also the modeling in, uh, of floods here um, is also the, the derivation of digital innovation models for, the, for um, digital innovation models, sorry, yes. And for the urban development, it's land use and land cover mapping uh, and exchange. In this group, uh, some negotiation and uh, negotiating agencies are already partners which are working together uh, and exchanging on these parameters and, um, and also not only exchanging on their own parameters, but trying to derive with using remote sending to extract these parameters to establish processing pipelines so that 
fast information can be also transferred. So these are the partners which are in the moment also included here. So the South Pacific Regional Environment Program, the University of South Pacific and the Geo-Pacific Islands Advisory Group. Let us go very shortly then to the next topic, which is agriculture and food security in India. Here, the main issue are crop uh, system mapping using remote sending. And the main issue is here the crop rotation mapping, which is changing uh, time by time and also depending on the ecological, uh, agro, agro ecological zone. And here, remote sending is it's very important uh, to provide information and also to, to develop methodology on how crop system can be best mapped. Um, the, the, the remote sending data here are mainly satellite data, but also UAV data uh, that are used uh, and has been used. Um, it is um, what they try to do is to exchange knowledge of, of agronomic practices. For example, what are the nutrition, uh, how is the water availability, uh, or nitrogen use, uh, or all the use of nitrogen efficiently. So that's also a very important parameter. The crop system mapping uh, has been um, here have been or has been initiated at different scales. So first they were looking on smaller scale, so country, uh, country scale, and then they are looking for state, but also in smaller areas like river basin and villages. That's here now example of one um, major crop system. Uh, classification where you have here classification um, classes uh, dedicated to the crop system itself. Uh, this has been derived by the uh, by a time series um, analysis of optical uh, remote sensing data. Crop production um, or pro crop production risk assessment is a second important parameter uh, in, in India here. And here mainly the main issue is the crop loss uh, due to uh, climate effects, like for example, cyclones and any kind of floodings uh, where we have very, very strong rain events. So um, the question is here also how to uh, map this and how to classify, how to identify region that has been affected by cyclones and strong floods. And therefore, um, why is this important? This is important in order to, to, to have a very fast rapid assessment of, of the rice damage, which is causing, um, which, which is caused quite strongly and is very severe, as you could also see on some of this image. So this is normally rice, how, how it is um, produced. And here below you see a map, and this is a Sentinel-1 map, which is a radar map, which is providing you information on where rice is growing and where damage uh, is caused due to, let me say, very localized uh, effects, rain events, or as I was saying, so cyclonic um, uh, damages. And you see really that's a map where, it's only, where you only have these two um, classification um, processes, but these, these are very important so that very fastly uh, people can um, observe how they can solve or find solution in, in these uh, smaller areas. Going further on, on floods in, uh, in water security in Africa, this is a map that you see about, uh, it's a global map, but let us focus here more on the on this, this, um, African country where, where you see in principle what, what is the um, what is the experience or increase in flood exposure in relation to the to the population to the growth of the population that we have? So all the colors the colors that you see here that are yellow means that this has been uh, increased in in past, which means from two thousand to two thousand thirty. So we have an increase of flood exposure. Whereas when when you look to the um, to the orange ones, then you see this is an increase in past and in future. So not only in the past, but also in the future. And everything that is here a little bit like rose is in principle the increase that is expected by model sim simulation from 2010 to 2030. So you see a big area of, uh, of Africa has uh, ha had an increase in past and will have an increase in future on flood exposure in relation to the uh, strong increase of population in this country. Everything that is here 
in, in blue means there's little change um, really documented uh, or there's a very small decrease in, in, in past and in future, but the strongest increase here is in these um, sub-Saharan African uh, region that you can see. So also here, uh, what is very important um, is really to find or um, to have more information about more localized areas. So going even local, not only con uh, continent-wise, but look separately, as you can see also, that's a little bit different depending on the nations that you have here and on their situations in the nations. But remote sensing also here can provide a lot of information and we are looking for people that are working together in order to, uh, to help and to, um, to make this prediction a little bit uh, more reliable. So what, the, what is the idea now about this local focused area in terms of operations? So what, what we try to do is to do team building using Zoom, Zoom session because we are in different zones. We are working very internationally together. Uh, we like that the, that the teams, the separate smaller teams are also connected uh, to the co-chairs uh, that I was presenting before in order to have a good exchange. But the main idea behind these local focused areas and the sharing and networking within these, uh, between the scientists is really an exchange and the sharing. And the sharing is here mainly focused on data sharing, on knowledge sharing, on algorithm sharing, but also to exchange on processing pipelines uh, to produce common publication uh, and to, to have an exchange also on technology. So that's something that is the main uh, like me, driving force um, of all these different regions uh, as a common thing, a common sense to work together. So as outcomes, we, we, we could think about that we could have common special session at, at JSTARS, or we could have invited session at, at our um, pre um, premier, let me say, um, conf international conference. JSTAR is one of the uh, application-driven um, yeah, scientific um, journals that uh, IEEE GRSS have. And as we're saying, what, what is really important here to, to try to find locally showcases that can connect to SDG and climate change issue and to provide a, a global view how we can improve our knowledge on a global scale. So if you're interested, you're really, really welcome to join uh, these uh, local focused areas. Let us go now a little bit on what REACT is doing in addition. So we are also working on smaller initiatives uh, that are supported. Um, for example, what we will do, we will announce a new initiative, which we call a mini project on EO for SDGs. Uh, this is a project that is uh, focusing on local students that like to work together so they can suggest uh, on certain topics uh, that will be defined, their projects and they can submit it as a proposal to us. And uh, this will be then awarded uh, um, or will, be, will have an award and we would like to award two to three uh, local teams. So when we will announce this mini project, we would announce them in May uh, uh, and we will send uh, a leaflet out so that everybody is um, aware of. We would also uh, have in September there would be the proposal submission deadline. And in November, we would provide or we would do a workshop, which we call Ideaton, where all the ideas are gathered from, from local students, uh, where they can um, present their project in terms of, again, related to climate change and sustainable development goals, uh, so that, we, that everybody is aware of uh, what is ongoing and what kind of progress uh, people are doing here. And we were thinking that the outcome of this student project uh, will be uh, then published in the um, GRSS magazine in December or March. Uh, so to, to outline this also to, to the other um, member of the society and to other scientists. If you like to see also more about what we are doing, we are also organizing an IGER session, uh, an invited session in uh, these IGERs. Um, which will take place in July in, in Kuala Lumpur. 
this will be a hybrid um, IGERS, so which means you can also online connect to it or you're welcome also to join. We will have a se special session or invited session on, on advances and remote sensing towards sustainable development goals, where we have invited speakers here. What we're also organizing is a panel session uh, at IGERS itself, which is also dealing uh, where, where we, where, which is also dealing, let me say, about sustainable development and, um, and climate issue. And we have invited people uh, from different institutions in order to provide us their perspective and uh, the availability of information and data sources they have uh, in terms to, to help uh, local regional um, regions also, or even globally, uh, to see what can we do and how we could mitigate or, or do adaptation in terms of climate change. We have also um, now worked on uh, currently on, on a video promotion. So this video promotion will soon also be open, available for everybody. Here we, we have a video. Uh, the main idea behind this video is that we have, again, different regions of interest uh, where, which, where they have very particular issues in terms of climate change. For example, North America is concerned of hurricanes and coastal erosion, South America, forest, Africa, food security and agriculture, as I was just saying, Asia about flat, Europe about uh, urban uh, urbanization, extreme temperature, <coughs> sorry, and Australia about desertification fire. It doesn't mean that any of these is not only also happening in any kind of other region, but these are examples that we would like to stress a little bit more out in these different particular areas, which has been done. Um, so the video will be done through interviews, <coughs> sorry, from experts that you see here. It will be in a 12.5 minutes, three minutes or one minute uh, video uh, shortcuts so that you can uh, listen to them and you see uh, what are the main issues in these particular domains. We have also a webinar, uh, not only th this is one of the first one which, which you see today just to present what is REACT and what we are doing and where we started now to work on and the first topics, but as I was saying, we're also widening, widening it up. Our first webinar was already last year in September, which were more the gathering of um, uh, of industry in order to report what what industry can can do in order to promote sustainability using remote sensing and we will have now uh, in the next months on, on a monthly basis different uh, presentations uh, concerning react but also uh, climate change and sustainable development goals. So we will start with a local focused area today you just saw a small extract about it. Uh, what we like to do, but this will be more focused. It will be more focused um, presentation now in, in the coming the following months. So starting with eight in April about the overview of the Pacific Islands. This is done together with another technical um, um, committee, which is uh, EIDF image analysis and data fusion. Um, and um, and they uh, so we are both contributing with presenters and. Uh, and so please just uh, follow us. So then you will also hear what is happening in, in, the next, um, in the next webinars. So if you'd like to join us and if you're getting interested in what we are doing, as I was saying, we start, just started. We, are, we have started now to build a team and we are starting now to work together to, to have this venue really of, of people coming together with their different expertise uh, and different knowledge in order to to make something better and make something more consistent and also sustainable uh, in terms of remote sending and our environment. So if you like to, to join us, um, we have a website uh, under the Geoscience and Remote Sending Society, IEEE uh, is www.grss-ieee.org. And here you will find uh, technical under technical committee our React logo. You just click to the React logo, and there's a join button where you can join. What we will do for those who join, we will try to provide your information, but also what you can do very easily, you can uh, exchange with us uh, easily in terms of what what kind of areas of interest you have or where you would like to go. 
Um, you can also contact us if you have interest, not only on the three local focused area, but if you like to open up a new local focus area in order to work uh, together with other scientists, but also other engineers. Yeah, that's um, my, my presentation of today. And um, yeah, I hope uh, I could motivate you really uh, that this is a very, very new initiative. This is a very new issue and it could motivate you that you're, um, let me say, uh, in getting interested and you joining us in order to increase the manpower uh, to work on this very, very important issues. So thank you very much. And I would open up now um, the, the screens or the voices for, for some questions. Okay, so I see there's already something in the chat. So if there are some questions now directly, uh, I'm happy to answer them also uh, like this, that you can just speak up. Uh, that's quite interesting. Otherwise, we could go through either through question that has been not answered. Probably, Subit, you have a better overview of the questions that are still missing. I could not follow them really during my presentation. Yeah, I think we answered all the questions, but if someone has any other questions, they can speak up. Um, and then someone asked if they can get the slides in the email. I, okay. I, I don't know, but that's, yeah. I think that's the oh, only yeah, one. Probably I should mention this. Um, uh, yeah, this session is recorded and will be available also on YouTube. So you can also listen to it later on. Uh, so everything that uh, I was talking today here about is, uh, as I think, recorded. And the slides, I'm not sure if this is, um, if this can be placed somewhere, but as you have the recordings, it should already help you. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we get access to the recording? Um, there's the GRSS YouTube channel. Uh, if you connect there, then you should be able to see it. It will be not today. It, I think it takes two days if I'm aware of, but probably Subi knows better how long it takes. Yeah, I would check next week. Yeah, but it's uh, in, in the following days. It will be available. Yeah. Okay. Are there some other questions, comments, suggestions. Yeah. Hello. 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 Yes, can we can hear, hear you. Okay, okay. Uh, the working groups uh, that you stated, is it okay if uh, students to join? Is it open to students? Yes, so ev everybody can join. Um, okay. must, so for the working groups must not be only students. I'm just mentioning that we have an initiative. So this is something that is separated uh, okay. where, where we do, let me say, kind of workshop out of it. But uh, let me say in general, for all these focused areas, uh, everybody can join. It's not only students, can be also senior scientists, can be professors, okay. Uh, okay. any kind of profession or let me say stage in terms of where you are you can join and contribute. Okay, 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 thank you. Uh, hi, Irena, uh, I hope you hear. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, it was a very nice presentation. I actually had one question, but you already answered it towards the end. Uh, what about new local focus areas? Because I'm also currently working in climate change oriented and SDG related uh, directions especially in high mountain Asia, so cryosphere oriented and so So I think that could be one local focus area which uh, um, many people would find interesting. Uh, I currently have a couple of grants. So there are also some students and collaborators from EU and the US. So it might be easy to bring them on, on board here. Mm -hmm. And uh, my only question at the moment was that, do you have a formal process for that or I can send you the names and my own profile or some description via email and you and the others in the XCOM or ADCOM would finalize it. Yes, yeah. So in principle, you just sent me your suggestion and, uh, and okay. we can in principle iterate this then. So probably just shortly uh, about the topic that you like to, um, yeah, let me, to lead, I would say probably or to 
yeah, delegate, whatever. And then uh, you just do a short description about it, right? What, what is the main issue here? Why is it climate uh, change related? And how to contribute to sustainable development goals, right? Yeah, that's a very good idea. Mm -hmm. And it's great, a very hot great. topic also in this area. Yeah, yeah. Hey, there's, there's a lot that needs to be done. So bringing mm -hmm. in more people would, would, would be very nice. So I will definitely right. send an email on and, that. And as, as you're saying, so this, that's exactly what we like to do. We like to join forces, right? Probably also other teams are working in this area. It would be really great to have an exchange on the specific areas uh, where yep. people are coming together with different methods, with different sensors, right? Uh, working yeah. together and having an exchange. Yeah, we, we strongly encourage people to, to work on these domains and, and then also to have this exchange. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. I will write you separately. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks. Are there some other questions or suggestions? So we are open. Uh, yes, I have one question. Do we have a Slack channel? A Slack channel? Yeah, yeah. I think it, yeah, using Slack, it would be better to like a, Announcement, any um, kind of related re related activities or events? Yeah, that's that's a very good suggestion. Probably, Subi, do you like to answer this question? Yeah, we don't have a React Slack channel, but we do have a, a, a white young professional Slack um, for GRSS, where you will also get the all the announcements. So you can join the young professional Slack. Um, I, I don't know if Ferruz is on the line and, and has a link to join, um, but I can also give it to you. So you but, will, like the, the all activities are posted on the YP Slack channel, including every technical committee, so. Okay, but yeah. we can think about it, right? We still don't have it. <laughs> yeah, we can think about it for sure. If, if, uh, if there's enough people, then yes, we can create something. Yeah, would be really great. It's a very nice suggestion, actually. So it's it's easier and faster to communicate, mm -hmm. specifically then also to the different uh, local focused areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I, um, I know that GRSS has a um, Slack channel and uh, I know sev several other um, GRSS community has their own small channel, a uh, sub channel, I would say in this Slack working space. So I, I would suggest you maybe just um, open a new sub-channel in, in actually GISS. Yeah, it's a very good idea. Mm -hmm. Thanks, yeah. Yeah, so, since you uh, for her uh, doing so much with uh, to, uh, about um, climate change. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thanks for this. That's a good suggestion for communication. Are there some other questions? Mm -hmm. So it was already posting the Slack link for YP. Mm -hmm. I do not really see other questions popping up now first. So um, if you like to have more, as I was saying, information about what we're doing and also the, the webinars, the announcement and so on. So as I was saying, the best is really to join and we will do now very, very, uh, re so often, let me say, so um, newsletters, we will send it around so that you, or information content, so that you, you're always aware of what is ongoing. But also, if you like to join specifically to a specific local focused area, right, then it's also great if you can just contact us. I think that would be great. So if you can contact us, then we could, could direct you to the person uh, that, is, uh, that, that is a lead of this local focus area. So that's great. Morgan, do you want to uh, say your question out loud? Hello, can you hear? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. So, uh, so I, I just 
I read your presentation and then I see they talk something about the uh, study on the Pacific Islands, right? And then I was imagining uh, whether or not React might do some studies about the previous uh, Tong Tonga eruption, things like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure really if this um, is inside, but I can imagine yes, uh, because there's, there, there's a variety of islands that are included. So I can imagine yes, but I'm, I'm not sure if this, because this has been not in the, in the tier one priority area, I know. Uh, oh, really? but, I, I, but as I know, the also eruptions are a big issue there and they are also investigating. Yeah, 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 I, I was just... Yeah, that, the news what would like... be interesting if you go to the to the next I mean next uh, so next month we will have a presentation directly to the Pacific Islands and you could mm. uh, you could see what is happening there are you working in this domain not really but uh, I'm interested in things like this so I would like to see what happens in in this uh, specific domain mm -hmm. okay thank you yeah Welcome. Is there another question? I don't really see this or something <laughs> popping up. No, I don't think so. So probably then. We can also close the session of, for today. So thanks again for, for listening and attending this, um, this session. I hope it was informative. So as I was saying, it's a very general thing just to say that we are now here and we like to establish something in order to bring the community together working on different, let me say in different countries, but on, on one total local focus area. And as I was saying, you're welcome also to suggest other areas of interest that are important where you can um, coordinate the work and you can work together. So I think this would be very great. So thanks a lot again. And uh, still, I wish you either a good morning, a good afternoon, or good evening. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot for all. Bye. <laughs>